I'm here now with Professor Oscar de Leon Casasola. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, Tanya. Thank you very much for uh, spending the time with me. <laughs> now, um, let's start off today. You've just come out of a talk of your own, a little bit controversial topic. Very tell us much about, so. yeah, tell us about that. So, um, do you know, as, as I gather, there has been a uh, push in uh, Australia to um, make uh, the use of marijuana legal, uh, or at the very least uh, legalize it for uh, medical purposes. The United States were in the middle of that, and uh, despite the federal government opposing that initiative, the state governments have approved the utilization for medical purposes, and in some of these states, for recreational purposes. So you can imagine that has brought a lot of issues at the forefront because um, as you saw in the lecture, uh, it was not clear, or it is not clear, uh, as to what are the implications about um, the uh, reward mechanisms, and as a result of that, the risk of addiction with marijuana. And uh, it is not clear from the data that we have now whether or not it's truly a, uh, a viable and useful alternative uh, for the treatment specifically of pain. How do you define cannabis? Is it, you know, how does it sort of... So cannabis is the product of, um, of a plant and um, uh, cannabis sativa and uh, what they do is they take the leaves and the flowers and then they dry them. So here's where the first step uh, that is important to consider comes into place. The um, amount of humidity uh, the temperature at which is harvest, uh, the soil, just like coffee, uh, will have a great impact in what you get as an end product. And cannabis is uh, a uh, um, product that has more than 400 active ingredients. And uh, those who are truly of importance to us are, uh, are less so. So you have those who are psychoactive, and uh, those who would have uh, a uh, therapeutic uh, importance for the treatment of pain. They're also known as cannabinoids. So cannabidiol, for instance, um, is part of that. And uh, the more cannabidiol you have, uh, the better expected uh, pain effect would be, as opposed to a greater concentration of uh, THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, which will namely uh, give you psychoactive effects. So it's very important to recognize that because the corollary of that statement is uh, that uh, depending on what you're getting, uh, you will have a lot of psychoactive uh, uh, results or some degree of analgesic effects. So this is where the term uh, NIH, NIH standing for National Institute of Health in the United States, NIH grade uh, uh, marijuana uh, for uh, the evaluation of the therapeutic effects. And not all of the studies that have been performed uh, have been uh, you know, standardized for a, a known concentration of cannabidiol and uh, other um, active substances, substances that will have an effect in pain management. So how does the response to this topic differ between, you know, like over here it is quite controversial and I suppose mm -hmm. it is the same over in New York and the States where you're from, but... Yeah, yes. Well, you know, first of all, I'm the past president of the American Society of Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine and during uh, my term uh, we had a position statement uh, urging the FDA to um, uh, downgrade the... Uh, the, the marijuana to a, what we call level two, which uh, uh, will be the uh, level at which the opioids are and other control, control substances, so that it can be effectively studied. At this point, it is uh, at a level where uh, heroin and cocaine are, so gaining access, gaining access to, uh, to study it is uh, uh, restricted, and as a result of that, you know, the the uh, research has not been able to, uh, to be done. So that would be the first step. Once we have that, then uh, it will be important to recognize these issues of uh, 
the psychoactive components and uh, the uh, endocannabinoid uh, uh, active ingredients. And uh, as a result of that, uh, then have a standardized testing in randomized controlled trials, just the way that we uh, you know, are used to do for uh, uh, other medications. And on a personal level, what's your stance on the topic? Uh, I don't use it, and I work at a cancer center. Uh, the palliative care um, specialist or group uses it, so we frequently have individuals uh, who are receiving treatment and uh, they want to uh, uh, evaluate the efficacy of medical marijuana. We uh, refer them to the palliative care service, but we're very careful because we work in line with them that uh, if a patient is receiving opioids, uh, they, they will not qualify for the medical marijuana program if they want to continue using the opioids. So it's either one or the other. Uh, the other issue in the United States is uh, that uh, uh, medical marijuana is heavily taxed by the, uh, the state governments and uh, as a result of that, uh, the cost of acquisition is very high. So uh, patients frequently get the prescription, go purchase it, and uh, they find that the cost is significantly greater than uh, that one for smoke products in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, on the street. So, so that is one of uh, the issues. And uh, my experience is that uh, most of the patients come back to my clinic to continue receiving the pharmacological treatment with opioids and adjuvants and abandon the, uh, the medical marijuana um, alternative. Really interesting topic to start the week off, but it's not the only time you're speaking this week. So No, I have other lectures too. Yeah, so give uh, us a snapshot of what those are all about. The other lectures, uh, do you know, there is, there is this difficulty in um, uh, bridging the uh, uh, basic science concepts with uh, the, the way we practice. So I have this lecture with uh, um, animation that uh, illustrates uh, the uh, different pathways that are activated in acute pain, acute post-operative pain, and uh, how we have different targets that can be exploited in order to, uh, to treat post-operative pain, the basis of multimodal therapy. So the lecture is called Neurobiological Basis of Multimodal Therapy for uh, uh, Acute Post-Operative Pain. Uh, I also will be speaking uh, on the cancer panel on uh, pharmacological management of uh, cancer therapy, and I will be addressing uh, the, the two studies that are available uh, for uh, uh, cannabis in cancer pain. And there is another one in the acute pain uh, special interest group, the SIG, uh, where they had asked me to address a, a very interesting topic. Is it uh, worth uh, winning opioids prior to uh, surgery in patients who are receiving opioids? So, uh, so those, those are my assignments for this meeting. <laughs> and you're certainly dressed for it, so... <laughs> I try to. <laughs> but as we were discussed, this is not the way I dress every day. <laughs> Just in special occasions. The people watching don't need to, need to, don't need to know that. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, Tanya. Thank you for your time. <laughs>